this video I'm going to um, do two example problems of solving radical equations. The first one's going to be a square root, the second one will be a cubed root, just to show you a little difference in about how we go about solving these. Alright, so for the most part here, if you have some experience with this, then you have probably told, been told that that radical has to be isolated. All right, so in other words, I can't have anything being multiplied in front of it, and I can't, in between the radical and the equal sign, I can't, if there were something there, adding or subtracting, I couldn't have it there. I need to isolate that radical. So in this case, I only have um, it being multiplied by 2, so I need to get rid of that 2 first. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 before I even start. That's going to give me the square root of x plus 5 is equal to 4. All right, now this radical has been isolated, so now I can do my inverse operation in order to get rid of that. The square root, if I want to get rid of a square root, the inverse operation would be squaring it. So I'm going to square the left-hand side, and I'm going to square the right-hand side. Now, when I do that, the square root and the square basically cross each other out. They are inverse operations. So then I'm going to have an x plus 5, and on this right-hand side, I'll just have a 16. <clears throat> Once that square root is gone, then it becomes a relatively simple equation here to solve. I can just subtract 5 from both sides. So minus 5, minus 5, and that's going to give me an x equals 11. Now, the thing with these uh, radical equations, whether they're cube root, square root, or whatever, you really do need to go through a check because you can have extraneous roots. You could come down, you could solve, you could get two different answers, and when you plug them back in, only one of them works. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test 11 here. So I'm going to take that original equation, and I'm going to do 2 square root of, let's replace that x with an 11. So 11 plus 5, and we're going to ask ourselves, is that equal to 8? All right, well, to do that, you've got to simplify over here. So 11 plus 5 is going to give me a 16. 2 square root of 16, again, is that equal to 8? Well, square root of 16 is 4, so this is 2 times 4, and indeed that is 8. So then it does check, so x equals 11 is the correct answer for this one. Okay, now we're going to do a second example. This time we're going to take a look at some cube roots. On this particular one, we happen to have a cube root on both sides, and there's nothing in front or to the right of either of these radicals, so they are already isolated. So since they are already isolated, I can immediately start to do the inverse operation to get rid of that uh, cube root there. All right, so cube root, the inverse operation would be cubing each side of the equation. Okay, just like the square root and squaring, this is cube root and cubing. All right, so basically what that does is the cube root and the cube goes away, the cube root and the cube goes away. That's going to leave me with an x minus 5 is equal to a 7 minus x. All right, so right away those um, cube roots fell out, which now makes the equation pretty easy to solve. We're going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. All right, 5s on the left-hand side are going to fall out. We are going to add x to both sides of the equation. All right, making those x's on that side fall out. I generally just do all that in the same step, kind of makes it a little bit faster there. x plus x on this side will give me a 2x, probably shouldn't be writing in red at this point. And then 7 plus 5 is going to give me a 12. Then dividing both sides by 2, x is going to be 6. Okay, so now I want to check this answer. All right, every time, it doesn't matter whether it's a cube root or a uh, square root, you do need to check. So this time I'm going to take x equals 6. I'm going to plug it into both locations there. So I'm going to have the cube root of a 6 minus 5. And I'm going to ask myself, is that equal to a cube root of a 7 minus 6? All right, doing the math underneath here, this is going to be 1. So I'll have the cube root of 1. And then does that equal 7 minus 6 will give me 1 on that side, cube root of 1, so 1 equals 1, so yes, it does check. So x equals 6 is the answer on this. All right, but the checking part is extremely important on any type of radical equation because you can have extraneous roots. Um, definitely, thanks for watching. Two quick examples here just to kind of get you back in the swing, maybe review radical expressions if it had been a while since you've done it. Thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.